Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. An excerpt from Psalm 134. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Here ends the reading. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Austin and I uh, moved into a house about a, a year ago, a year and a few months ago. And um, the backyard had two beautiful crepe myrtle trees and a red maple, um, uh, and then a wild gardenia bush and a, a wild rose bush. Um, and you could tell they hadn't really been cared for in a while. Now, I don't, I don't know much about gardening. Austin has the green thumb in our family. And, uh, and so when, you know, we spent a year kind of busy moving in, getting settled, putting things on the walls, fixing plumbing and electricity. And this year we decided we were really gonna focus on our yard. And so Austin with great care and effectiveness read all about how to prune a rose bush and so he went out one day with clippers feeling very empowered by his knowledge and and started pruning and for a while it looked bad I'm just to be honest it looked bad it was just dead empty branches he cut a bunch of stuff away so it looked kind of straggly and 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 like perhaps he did more damage than good but then the spring came and all of a sudden leaves started to appear and uh and it just it is this shower of roses it's incredible i mean last year it bloomed and and it looked pretty but 
it's covered in roses and new growth this year. I mean, just exploding with these beautiful pink flowers that smell wonderful. And he picks one occasionally for me and brings it into the house and puts it in a little bud vase. And it just is incredible. Incredible the amount of growth this rose bush has had just in one spring, just with a little bit of pruning. And I thought about that this this week and today as I read the scripture passage. Pruning can look bad and feel empty and uh, like maybe you did something wrong because you said no when society is so used to us saying yes. But the problem is we say yes to too many things. We have too much going on in our lives and we're busy from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and no one has time to sit and rest and be and well we've got uh, lots of time to do that now but um, but the idea of pruning I think is a really important spiritual trait. The practice, the discipline of cutting back, of saying no, of taking away all of the things in our life that aren't bearing fruit. And it can feel at first like we're doing it wrong. But when spring comes, when when the growing season in your life occurs, the explosion of new growth can be incredible and beautiful and holy. Last year, without any pruning, our rose bush did okay. It produced some flowers. It looked decent. But this year, this year when we cut it back, when I thought perhaps we cut it back too much, what happened was it gave the nutrients in the ground a chance to to focus on just a few areas instead of many and to really burst through with new life. What could multiply, could exponentially grow, could take root and really flourish in your life if you focused a little more on pruning? I think right now is a good time to think about that and to develop that discipline a little more. We all need pruning. We all say yes to too much. We're all too busy. That's okay. Everyone has those seasons. But I hope you'll use some of this time to think about where you might prune so that new life might grow in, so that you might actually flourish and thrive instead of just surviving. God intends for us to bear fruit. But if we don't prune, we'll only kind of do that, right? It's not an easy spiritual discipline, but it is rewarding and it can help you flourish. And that's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for all of us to flourish, to bear fruit until we're bursting with life. That's what feeds others that beauty, that nourishment. Go and do likewise so that your joy may also be complete. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.